Goose, I'm going to cough now. How are you? Um, I'm hanging in there. Like you said, we're both, you're in the midst of just being completely obliterated with something. I'm coming down with something for sure. Um, and the bulls are definitely down with something. Uh, I don't know what the, the locker chemistry is like right now. Uh, obviously tonight, Javante didn't play at all. So he was not back in the starting lineup uh, to kind of follow up the switches that Billy made in the previous game against the Warriors. Um, so Pat, Pat back in the starting lineup, had a couple moments tonight, and Zach actually looked like a max player, uh, despite the Bulls losing and his counterparts really not having it together and showing up. But at least tonight, Zach Levine did seem to respond to the uh, mass criticism that he is facing uh, currently on every media platform. I thought this was the best game he's played, a complete game, uh, defense, offense, was the driving factor of the Bulls even really being in it, besides that bench run that they were went on. Um, you know, but losing the last three in a row now, uh, and then on this road trip, we only won two. So what do we do there? We went two and four on the road trip, six-game road trip. We went two and four. Uh, started off by beating Milwaukee, losing to the Thunder, beating the Jazz, uh, losing to the Suns, Warriors, and now Kings. And the next game is until Wednesday against the Wizards. Um you know, there's there's not a lot of talk about besides the starting lineup change right now. And were you in favor of that when it happened? I saw a lot of people didn't like it. Zach himself kind of made some comments like he was kind of not into it. Um, I'm into it. I thought that, you know, and I love Io, you know that. Um, I just thought that it was better personnel for the three stars, I guess, uh, that, that surrounded them. You know, that guys that know their role and aren't trying to search for shots or something like that. They just know how to play the role perfectly. Uh, I shouldn't say perfectly. but Yeah, they- I mean, g- given how slow this team has started most games uh, throughout the year, to, to see that change be made was something that we've talked about a lot. I know just about everybody else has at least alluded to at some point during the season. To see Bull- Billy kind of pull the trigger on that um, – is more telling of the situation itself for me. Um, I'm in favor of it. Um, I, although it, it may come off contradictory, I do like Zach's response as well. Um, Io and Pat are two guys that project to be on this team with him going forward. Obviously, we got the news that Billy uh, received an extension in the offseason too, a little hush-hush there. Um, but Zach, somewhat, maybe even unintentionally, but standing up for his guys and saying, no, I didn't think that was necessary. That rotational switch, the starting lineup swap, I didn't think it was necessary. And he was very vocal about it. And I know a lot of fans uh, were were hitting him with the, you've had one winning season in your career. You should probably play better before you start talking. But I did like to see Zach stand up for the young guys, um, whether that was intentionally or unintentionally with that statement, um, despite the fact that I do agree that, the change was necessary and something had to happen because this team has just started flat too many. Right. I didn't really think of it the way that you just formatted that uh, sticking up for his teammates. I kind of just felt like Zach was pushing back at Billy again a little bit uh, just from comments that happened earlier in the season. Um, So I wasn't really sure how to take it. I didn't really like it. I just, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm never a big media guy in in, in general. Like I know we're like technically doing media, but you know what I mean? Uh, Keep it locker room type shit. But I understand now that how you kind of formatted that. It makes sense. I mean, I kind of agree with that, you know, sticking up for his teammates, you know, it's just, it's not meshing that he's, they got to do something, you know, it, it, dude, they're, I mean, they're bad right now. And the issue is uh, outside of our savior actually coming back, which doesn't seem like it's going to be the case because he's still not running or jumping or doing anything of that nature. Can you throw more assets at this current project? Can you do that comfortably? Because I have not seen enough that says, hey, we should throw more assets at this. Um, Outside of swapping players out, including more picks at this point is kind of out of the question for me. Well, it's funny you bring that up because an article came out today and then I wrote an article about it. It'll be probably released later tonight or tomorrow over on tap, sportsnet.com. But uh, it it was – players that were uh, deemed untouchable. And this was written by Rick Buecher of Fox Sports. And he said that the people that are on the untouchable list for the Bulls are DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine. Now, if you're going to do anything to get an expiring contract, 
and try to get out of DeMar's final year if that's what you want to do. If they're, you know, I, I'm not ready to do that. I personally, I'm not ready to do it. Um, and when I'm not ready to do it, probably means it's the right call. That's why I don't work in the NBA. But, uh, I mean, he, they would have to. I mean, he'd be him and Vooch, you know, because I, 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 they can't trade Zach to what is it, Goose? Is it January 15th or is it December 15th? It's I one think of the it's two. January 15th. Right. So I'm not really sure, man. Uh, but what do you think about that? Those two are the untouchables. I think that's a very false statement. You think it's generic? Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's what you'd assume going into the season. If you haven't watched this team, I think that would be an assumption that you could make. Um, I don't see why one of those two guys isn't traded. I, I think it's DeMar more likely than Zach because of the big contract and the Zach still has time to to live up to that contract kind of thing. DeMar's already exceeded his contract. Um, what, yeah, within one Bulls, year. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what the Bulls have got out of him, which initially was kind of deemed as an overpay, um, he's overplayed his contract already. And right now, as much as I love DeMar and I don't want to get rid of him selfishly at this point of his career, not trading him is doing him a disservice to make him continually have to play with what he's playing with. You tried. You put the right pieces together. I pointed it out on Twitter in the offseason on J.J. Reddick's podcast. He literally said the things that needed to happen outside of obviously the money that the Bulls were willing to offer uh, that other places weren't uh, was the Bulls needed a point guard. Uh, everyone around the league could look at that roster and go, mm, no point guard, kind of tough to see how things are going to mesh together uh, without that. And he needed a verbal, you know, kind of reassurance from Zach that he did plan on staying long term. So you've got Zach to resign at this point. Um, you've accomplished your goal. Um, you've seen that you can put a contending level team around him, but if internally you know that Lonzo is not coming back and you have an offer of a giant expiring contract with Westbrook, whether you plan to use him as a player or not, or just buy him out so he can go to another contender, um, if you can gain assets, cap space, and reload for this offseason uh, and semi-tank without tanking, you know, like not full-blown tank, but I think Russell Westbrook and Zach Levine could play some competitive basketball on top of acquiring those assets as well. So I don't think that anyone's untouchable. I think it's harder to get the value for Zach that you need to get for him to feel comfortable moving on from him um, with how he's played so far this season. I don't think he has the value that he used to. But DeMar, I, I do not think he's untouchable just because situationally it's, it's the point of his career where this is what's left in the tank, and he shouldn't waste it on a roster like this. How would the spacing look? Because if if he went over to L.A., I, I what, from what I read, it was a DeMar DeRozan and Vucevic thing for um, for Russ, because Russ is making like 40-something million. Uh, I think it would have to take those guys. Um, how would that look? Because, if I mean, Vuce, not that Vuce spaces the floor great now. He's not terrible, but, I mean, he doesn't space the floor great now. I mean, how would that look? I mean, Pat shoots at a really high clip. Uh, I mean, pretty decent clip. Um, but then you'd have Drummond in there. I, I just how does that look? I mean, are you, are you talking about with Westbrook here in Chicago? Yeah, yeah. I could just I mean, brought it up. Similar. I mean, what what do you have right now with Demar? You don't have somebody who spaces the floor. You have somebody that kind of lives in the post, kind of makes Vooch have to live more on the perimeter than being able to linger in uh, where Stacy would like to see him hang out more. Yeah, but um, at least he has that midi. He's like, got that many, but Westbrook is a drive and kick facilitator. He's a triple double machine. You don't have a point guard right now. At the right. very least, started uh, Russ is still a starting caliber point guard in this league. Um, and, and next to Zach, you finally have somebody that is worthy to take the ball out of his hands every possession. We saw Zach play a lot of point guard, uh, facilitator kind of role tonight, which wasn't a bad thing. He was somewhat successful in it despite the uh, outcome of the game itself. Um, Zach did well in that role tonight while well, the rest of his teammates somewhat struggled. Um, but you, you would have somebody capable of doing that as we're now, you know, IO shows the, those flashes to where he can do it. And he is that drive and kick facilitator, but he's being bench for Alex Caruso. Who's just your defensive juggernaut currently. Right. Right. Just yeah. because the, the energy and putting the ball in Zach's hand is something Billy's more comfortable. 